Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel, that is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And this is my mid-year freakout book tag. I think this is a staple of YouTube in the booktube world because it's just so fun to do. And it's a nice way to catch up and kind of look back on how a reading is going. Jumping in, best book I have read so far in 2023, and for this one I am going with Trust of the Emerald Sea by Brandon Sanderson. Brandon Sanderson is a hit or miss author for me. However, this one it was so sweet and heartwarming, definitely like a cozy fantasy, and it's kind of based off of the Princess Bride, but where Buttercup or the female goes looking for her lost love who everyone has said that has died and she doesn't believe it. And I I just love how much of an active character Tress is. Like, she makes decisions and they don't always work out for her, but she is actively acting, not being acted upon. And I love that. Question number two. Best sequel you've read so far in 2023? And I am going to go with Fence Volume 5 by C.S. Packett and Johanna the Mad. So this is a queer contemporary series following fencers. And we're following Nicholas as he is gotten into a, fin a private school and he's gotten onto the fencing team. And he is working to get better. He has the natural talent, but he has to now learn the technical skills. And it's just heartwarming to see these young men come together and their relationships blossom and grow with one another. So I think that is why I would say that is the best sequel that I've read this year. Uh, question number three. New release you haven't read but want to. And I am going to go with The Faithless by C.L. Clark. I absolutely loved The Unbroken last year and The Faithless came out this March and I just haven't read it yet. But I still want to. Number four. Most anticipated release for the second half of the year and... It's going to be Systems Collapse by Martha Wells, the next installment of Murderbot. I, I'm very excited. That's, the, I think, one of the only books I know coming out this fall. But I'm very excited for that one specifically. Number five, biggest disappointment. Um, and I remember I was reading a book and then I DNF'd it. And I don't remember which book it was. <laughs> So I guess we can say any book that I've DNF this year has been a big disappointment because I'm picking up books because I want to like them and then if I have to put them down because something isn't working or it's boring, we're going to say disappointment. I'm not going to call it any book specifically. I tend not to call out my DNFs just because oftentimes they, if they don't work for me, they work for somebody else really well. I always try to just be like, yeah, this is why it doesn't work for me. Question number six, biggest surprise. And I don't want to repeat Tress of the Emerald Sea, so give me a moment. I'm going to go with Sex Talks by Vanessa and Xander Marin. This is a, I don't know why. This is like a self-help book where it's focused on having conversations about sex. So it's not about how to get better at sex, but how to have meaningful conversations with your sexual partner or partners. And just how to be honest and explain, this is what I want, this is what I'm comfortable with, this is what I would be interested in doing in the future. And to understand that everyone approaches sex differently. So I think this was just a great surprise. I wasn't... Ex it, this was, wasn't anything that was on my radar until I heard Margaret Pernard do a review of it. And then after reading it, I, I absolutely loved it and have enjoyed sharing this with other people. Question number seven, new favorite author. And in this case, I'm going to go with T. Kingfisher. I know that this is an alias for Ursula Vernon, but I had never read anything by her until this year. And this year I read Nettle and Bone and What Moves the Dead and really enjoyed both of them. 
I enjoyed What Moves the Dead more, and very excited to see it on the shortlist nominees for the Hugos. And it really has made me want to read more of her books. Question number eight. Newest fictional crush. And even though I'm old and I don't typically get a crush on someone in fiction anymore, I really did enjoy the male love interest in the graphic novel Crumbs. I liked how he approached his partner to the point where he did not understand what he was doing than to put her off after they had spent more time together. But I like that she had the courage to tell him so then he could be like, oh, okay. And that he was willing to let her pursue her dreams instead of saying, no, you have to choose me and my dreams. Nine, newest favorite character. And I'm gonna go with Scout from The Last Gifts of the Universe by Rory August. Scout is an archeologist and they are on a mission to kind of find relics or caches to figure out why every other civilization is dead and how that is happening. And Scout is also on a journey to deal with grief about their mother dying. And so it's a space opera with a second agenda. And I really like that Scout has that depth. And also the relationship Scout has with their brother was very nice as well. Ten book that made you cry. I'm going to go with the short story collection Alchemy of Sorrow. This is a collection of short stories that are focused on grief and hope, both. And there are several stories in there that I cried. I didn't expect to, but as things were going along, it's just like the emotions hit me. I do like something that the Alchemy of Sorrow does is with each of the short stories, it has trigger warnings, so you can decide which short stories you want to read. But definitely, I think more people should read this. 11. Book That Made You Happy. And I am going to go with Book Lovers by Emily Henry. This was my first Emily Henry that I've read, and it's a romance, contemporary, which generally isn't my thing. But I just loved the main character and how she knew who she was and knew what she wanted. And when you meet the love interest, he is the same way. It's nice to see a romance between two people who are the same personality and how they work with one another and can work. So many times we hear opposites attract and we see like a grumpy sunshine, but in this case you have two very focused individuals who work really well together. Number 12, most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received? You know I'm not actually a book collector for what the book looks like. I don't know. I know that I purchased some like secondhand paperbacks, but it was more the author's type, uh, but it was more the author name that caught my attention or the synopsis. Not, you know, though I can be wooed by a pretty cover. I just don't think that has happened this year. And then question number 13, what books do you need to read by the end of the year? The Hugo nominations <laughs> are kind of forefront on my brain right now. The Chengdu World Con will be in October, so I have until the end of September to read them. And the shortlist nominations were announced on the 6th of July, a little bit later than we were all expecting. So I really need to get my game on with those. So that that is really kind of what my focus is for getting things read for this year. If you have done this video, please let me know down below so I can go watch it. I always enjoy watching the Mid-Year Freakout book tag. And if you don't do videos, answer some of these questions, please, because I'd like to know what your thoughts and opinions are, especially the best book you've read so far in 2023. I'd be very interested to know that one. Thank you, and have a great day.